Hi there, thank you so much for joining me again on this channel. As always, I'm very grateful for all your previous views, likes and subscriptions to the last video. I thought today we'd spend some time having a look at Rush from 2013. Um, quite an amazing film and directed by uh, a man called Ron Howard. Um, he started off in the limelight. He was a child actor and uh, then became particularly well known for his role as Richie Cunningham in a TV show called Happy Days. You might need to ask your grandparents about that one. But uh, after that, rather than falling into obscurity, he became a very accomplished director. For me, one of the reasons why I like his work is that he's willing to have a, a go at a wide range of genres, not always successfully, but he's done romantic comedies like Splash. He's done true life dramas like Apollo 13 and A Beautiful Mind. Uh, he's done children's family films in the shape of The Grinch. He's also had a go at the big sci-fi blockbuster, Solo, A Star Wars Story. Also the Dan Brown trilogy. But let's have a look at Rush from 2013, as I said earlier. Set in the world of motor racing and Formula One. And, and I think one of the reasons why it works as a movie is because all the best sport movies are not about the sport. It's about the people, the characters and the situations that are involved. And um, 1976 was an extraordinary year for motor racing. Uh, and there was a battle for to be champion of the world between James Hunt, uh, the British motor racing driver played by Chris, um, also Thor Hemsworth, and also Daniel Brühl, who plays the Austrian uh, Nicky Lauda. And there are the classic two sides of the same coin. Um, James Hunt was the absolute kind of rock star on wheels. He had it was all about instinct. He was all about uh, a life of enjoyment. He was all about as well taking huge risks on the track. Nicky Lauda was the opposite. He was someone who was calculating, analytical uh, and absolutely prepared for a race with absolute thoroughness. Interestingly enough though, they did actually have very similar backgrounds, both of them from very well-off families and both of them in a way kind of shunned or uh, disappointed their families by going into this uh, lifestyle rather than going into a traditional blue, uh, sorry, white collar work. So, um, and the way the movie plays out is that we have um, their biggest battle in 1976 played out. And it was a remarkable year because at that time, motor racing was unbelievably dangerous. Uh, Nicky Lauda, uh, played by uh, Daniel Brawl, narrates uh, some of the opening scenes and says that there's a risk is uh, every season at least two of the drivers being killed. And um, what happened in the 1976 uh, World Championship is that Nicky Lauda was involved in an extraordinarily uh, uh, dangerous moment, which very nearly cost him his life. His car developed a fault, uh, it spun off, and he basically uh, caught on fire. He was trapped in the car for nearly a minute uh, of temperatures of up to 800 degrees Celsius. And at that point, uh, it was really was touch and go. A priest came and said, last right. Um, remarkably, he actually uh, came back uh, to complete the season, as it were, only after spending 40 days or so in hospital. And at that point, he was leading the world championship and uh, James Hunt uh, was in second. And we get to the last race of the season and Hunt needs to take at least third place to win the championship. I'm not going to give anything away because I think that's fair. But I think what I will say is that, of course, there are always one or two historical liberties when you look at a film based in, in real life. But certainly there is an emotional truth to it. And I think actually that both actors capture um, the essence of their characters really well. And apparently uh, when it was first screened, Nicky Lauda, uh, who saw the film, was, was bowled over and said that Daniel Brühl on screen was literally him. Um, and I think as well for a movie that was made on a budget of $38 million, I think it was, it doesn't look cheap at all. You really do see everything on screen. But as always, there's some really interesting issues for us to look at in this uh, particular movie. And um, there's a brilliant quote uh, said by Lauda and actually he says it just after he uh, gets married and he says this happiness is your biggest enemy it weakens you puts doubts in your mind suddenly you have something to lose uh, he was absolutely fixed on winning uh, the world championship and being the best that he could be and it's quite a striking moment in the movie when he says this to his wife uh, after that they're literally just on honeymoon but I think what's interesting is this from us from a wider perspective thinking about religion and philosophy uh, it's a very good question which is what is happiness 
many people uh, in religions, many people like psychologists and uh, sociologists have tried to work out what is happiness. And there's a big tradition of this uh, in uh, the world of philosophy. Uh, first of all, uh, go back to the Greeks, a guy called Aristotle, who said that his definition of happiness was achieving things. And when you achieve something, uh, you become happy. And certainly Lauda uh, wants that achievement of being world champion. There's also a British philosopher called Bertrand Russell, uh, who said that um, zest, uh, the idea of having an appetite for possible things is a way of being happiness. He talks about how um, when you achieve something that's been difficult, you get that sense of satisfaction. So maybe after you've done a really difficult piece of, uh, of homework or you had a particularly uh, daunting task, like painting and decorating an entire room in a weekend, you get a sense of happiness. Um, and actually it's a very uh, fundamental question uh, not about existence, as it were, but about happiness, because you can exist, but we don't have happiness. It can seem a rather dull existence. Uh, I guess that's why we have art and literature and music and other forms of culture to make life interesting. And so maybe you might want to think about what do you think happiness is and just have a look around in your research and your own studies and think about um, some of these uh, scholars, these philosophers who talk about what is happiness. And uh, I just thought it was a really great moment in the movie, particularly when uh, Lauda says this uh, to his wife. Um, there's another great moment as well in the movie, and here's a, a fantastic shot of uh, Lauda and Hunt, uh, played by Hemsworth and Brawl. And uh, Lauda says to Hunt, a wise man can learn more from his enemies than a fool from his friends. So, of course, I went to Google and uh, to find out a bit more about this, and it's actually a quote uh, from a Jesuit priest, a guy called, and again, a massive apology for pronunciation here, Balthazar Gratian, um, uh, who from the 1600s was well known uh, for writing uh, um, what were called uh, conceptos, which were like uh, very short but rhythmic and direct uh, phrases, um, kind of like uh, almost like little slogans. Um, and it's an interesting point, isn't it? I, I mean, it's quite an interesting idea that someone can learn more from their enemy because, of course, um, Lauda and Hunt were rivals on the track. And they. Uh, this is just my interpretation. I think in some ways they saw a little bit of themselves in each other. Yes, they were opposites, but they both had that same background and they both wanted to win. But they went about it in very different ways. But actually, I was thinking about that quote. And actually, can life be really reduced to a slogan or a handful of slogans? Um, that's not to degrade uh, Gratian's work. It's more about saying that if you look at um, some of the written words of other philosophers or maybe you hear some speeches or maybe you look at some religious texts and well it, it just seems a bit trite doesn't it just to sort of fling out a slogan uh, maybe you've sat in uh, business meetings or maybe you sat in assembly and the speaker's going here's a really inspirational quote for you and you go yeah but do you know what it's got nothing to do with my life and it's not really relevant and you're just throwing just stuff you googled and pasted and put it on powerpoint for me well i think that's very interesting um to think about how deep life is and can it really be summed up in a slogan you know like the miles a day helps you work rest and play or do the shake and back and put the fresh in your back or you know mm, i'm loving it yeah we can all remember them but are some of these little uh you know wise quotes even from very respected people out there uh, are they just nothing more than you know a nice little postcard to buy in paper chase who knows but i think that's what really struck me something to, to think about and i think uh, as well there's a, a a fantastic moment as well where actually pretty much in response to that hunt uh, says to Lauda, I intend to enjoy myself first. Some of life needs to be for pleasure. What's the point of having a million cups and medals and planes if you don't have any fun? How is that winning? Um, in real life, James Hunts was not known for self-denial. OK, he had uh, you know, he enjoyed all the richness of life, partying, goodness knows what else. And it's shown in the movie. Um, but I think what's particularly interesting is there is actually a philosophy called hedonism, a belief system. It's the idea of just living literally for pleasure alone, uh, that as long as your pleasure outweighs the pain and that you're not hurting other people, 
uh, although some say that it's impossible to live a life of pleasure alone without in some way hurting other people or just purely thinking about yourself and therefore you are uh, implicitly being selfish um, but it is something which uh, a philosophy which some people do do embrace they may not embrace it knowing it is hedonism but something you might want to to roll around with in your brain you think well actually um you know uh, other different types of pleasure uh, and actually also is there a difference between happiness and pleasure so uh, if you do have the opportunity to watch rush uh, then maybe you can have those uh, thoughts in your mind please be aware the movie does uh, contain uh, very graphic scenes of injury detail as well and strobe lighting i do need to, to make you aware of that but until uh, we uh, meet again here on the channel can i just say thank you so much for watching i really do appreciate it and uh, if you're able to uh, please like subscribe but most importantly, enjoy your learning.